Hello, this video is about adding icons to Gravity Form submit buttons so they can match Beaver Builder buttons where it's very easy to add a directional icon and also so it works with third-party Beaver Builder add-on packs that allow you to style Gravity Forms including the buttons and the best way to explain this is to go over to this contact page here where you'll see I've got a Gravity Form here where I've added using my bit of code the directional icon here but as you see, I've got this open and I'm able to style this button, the color backgrounds, the fonts, the shape of the button and the size of the fonts using, in this case, PowerPacks module that does this. So my bit of code will work with also this add-on pack and that would be the same for the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder and also works with another plugin that I mentioned by the same people who makes PowerPack idea box and this is one that works with the customizer. I think it's called, and I've got the link on my page, Stylizer for Gravity Form. So you can do the same thing with my code and still do the sort of background styling of that using this plugin. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Let me go back to the page that I've set up. So all that you need is on this page. It's on my only.beaverjunction.com site under tips and tricks at the moment and the link will be below. So I'm just going to work through this and try my best to explain what it is. So let me start with the problem first with gravity forms. I'll be honest, often I'm not adding these icons because it's a bit of a pain. The thing is with gravity forms, there's no place where you can add the icons directly. So if you go to the settings page, I've put a bit of a screenshot here, but if I go to the actual one here you'll see that you're able to change the text from submit which is generally a good idea because submit's not a very conversion friendly bit of text but you can't add any HTML here to add something extra. You can only really change it into an image, which isn't great. You can't kind of add an icon to this. And part of the problem as well is that because it uses an input tag for this submit button, you can't use a technique that I often use, which is using before or after pseudo elements to apply that icon to it. So that allows you to add via CSS stuff that's not already in the document through HTML. And that's my usual trick, but it can't be done while it's still an input tag because it doesn't work. So my old solution used to be to go to the Gravity Forms own documents, their knowledge base, and go and grab this bit of code and add it to my functions PHP file and my child theme and that would change the input to a button and then I could use that pseudo element technique to do it. Gravity forms don't actually give you that information so you kind of need to know a bit of CSS anyway to be able to make that work. But once you've changed this to a button then of course it breaks all of those third party add-on packs that assume that it still is the input tag so i wanted to change the method and that's what i've done over here with this new bit of code and it's just here below it's just it's not in the the same a pre-format here because it actually just sort of doesn't show properly but um, you just need to add this to your child themes functions PHP file. And what it does is it adds a span tag to the end of the button. So after the button ends, there is a span tag there. And I can just show you this better here. So the actual span tag would just be just at the end here. And what we're doing with the CSS is we're dragging it back across to the button over here. So that's what that's doing. Let me go over and show you this. Now, previously in videos, I would generally recommend not doing sort of PHP changes in the back end via appearance and editor, because typically if you left out something like the end curly brace as a typical thing, I'm gonna remove that now, it would break your site. But since WordPress version 4.9, it's now got a measure to stop that happening. If I go and update this now, it's not gonna break as it would do in before. It tells me that there is something wrong there with this and stops me from making those changes. So now this is gonna be the place where I do most of my updating because it's also got all this syntax highlighting as well, which makes it 
much nicer to work with. So let me just pop back that curly brace and save it again. So yes, as I mentioned before, this is just adding a span tag, an empty span tag, so there's nothing there, nothing you can kind of see. I've also added in this ARIA hidden. This is just for accessibility. It hides the icon from screen reader, so that's just a little added extra I've put on here. Something just to mention while I'm on this, on this filter here, and it's also, I think, explained over here. Let me just go back up here, I think it's, here yes all you need to do on the filters is to add underscore and the number of that form the id for that form and you can make it specific to that particular form here i've removed that so it's generic and is going to apply to all forms and all the buttons on that form perhaps i should just while i'm here just quickly go and look at the form so you can see if you don't know how to do this um, to be able to find the id once you've created the form it'll show you anyway if you were trying to create a new post but you can just find it quickly if you look to the bottom of the screen down here you'll see that that's uh, id one and you'll get an id for all of these okay so i've gone a little bit off topic here so that's all you need to do is to add that php and that's kind of set for all time now the more tricky bit is the css and there's kind of two parts to this these the first bit which is adding in the actual icon from font awesome here so in this case this is only for that directional icon that i've needed if you need to add other icons that's what my standard then you just need to go over to the font awesome site and i will put a link in the document which i haven't already done and then you can grab the correct number here I mean, I know if I wanted this pointing the other way, I just need to change the five to four and it points the other way. And this font size here, I've tried to explain it over here, actually sort of increases the size of the icon and obviously not the text font because that's separate. The Z index is added here because I noticed if you clicked and the button was Ajaxed, the, the actual icon sort of disappeared for a moment. But this is the real one that makes all of the difference. If I go over to, um the document here as you can see that is really the distance that's going back so we you have to adjust this negative margin left to bring it closer to the text and this final bit of css here is dealing with something which is maybe a little bit more subtle i don't know if i can show you this easily um what happens is it if you don't move this text a little bit to the left, it's always going to remain centered. So the icon's going to go after, and that doesn't match the buttons with Beaver Builder. The kind of the whole thing is centered, including the extra icon. So I've needed just to make it kind of fit in with the general design. I've needed to change that text from being centered. So uh, let's just go back. What I've done here is use the the selectors here for that font, stopped it being a text center and moved it to left and then added padding left. So it moved it back towards the center. So that's where you need the adjustment. Mostly you're gonna probably need to change your icon. So you'll need to go to the font awesome icon set there and pick out what the numbers are that you're gonna need there and you're going to just really need to adjust these to get the position in as you want them and that is pretty much it uh, something i did mention on here if you picked up on that on the php here i had to use single quotes because they wouldn't work but you'll notice for uh, let's just find it for that aria hidden here it is actually double quotes which is outputted as so it's correct here one other last thing quickly to mention is that there is a bit of a difference between the power pack sizing of the button uh oh i've gone to the ultimate add-on so this is my ha yes this is my site that's using the ultimate add-ons for doing the styling here and you'll notice that they've got a custom width here so the the actual code you're using works at 200 pixels that's how mine's set up so the ones on this document is from this one and that's 200 pixels it's not the same on the power pack one 
where you're setting the size of the button really with your left and right padding. So that code that, that changes the centering of that still works with it because you decide your left padding on that. Okay, I think that's probably about all I can say on this. I have the horrible feeling that I may have confused matters even more. It's not an easy thing to get over, but hopefully you'll see that it is just a couple of adjustments with CSS to be able to line those up, and I hope you'll be able to work out the rest for yourself. Anyway, that's me done. Hope that's useful. I hope, as it's just coming up to Christmas, that you all have a great break, and I'll... Uh, Talk to you soon on another video, hopefully. And please give me a like if you thought this video was useful. Thanks very much. Goodbye.